one thing that people freak out about, and oftentimes I'm a little skeptical of their concerns, is people think they're being shadow banned. It's always people think they're being shadow banned. Like, is shadow banning a real thing? And what does that mean? Well, I I mean, there's no policy that is shadow banning. So I think it's sort of a slang term. I mean, a lot of my friends and people I know just send me examples because unfortunately there are a lot of mistakes. I mean, I think part of the the issue is that, okay, if there's three and a half billion people using these services, um, and if we make, you know, a mistake 0.1% of the time, that's like still millions of mistakes right right so so it's like so there's all these cases and that, that sucks right the first phase was building facebook and right? it's like okay can we build a social product that's super successful and we did we basically made like the most used service in the world and then it's like okay like once you're lucky but like can can we do this multiple times right so and then that's when you know we got instagram joined us super early i think there were 16 employees at the time and i think it had 20 million people using it or something something like super early um and then the whatsapp folks joined i mean i think there were about 60 people working at whatsapp so these were super early things when they joined us but and we've scaled both of those two i mean whatsapp now is you know more than 2 billion people um instagram is i don't, I don't think it's quite 2 billion yet but it's basically um it's 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 on its way um so and then messenger we we kind of grew from scratch and that has more than a billion people too oh mark zuckerberg i'd love to talk to mark he seems like an interesting guy i don't like the way you sip water though when you're sipping water What's in the up? senate you're sipping water like a robot i mean let yeah. me see you take a real drink i mean go ahead ah, like a I mean, honestly person. those <laughs> that's the senate testimony is not exactly an environment that is set up to <laughs> accentuate the humanity of the subject it, you know, no, it's, it's quite the opposite right um I don't know. I mean, if you're you're up there for for six or seven hours, you're gonna yeah. you're gonna make some face that's uh, that's that's worth making a meme out of. But right, and then they're just gonna only concentrate on that, and that's gonna be the big deal. One of the thought experiments that I like to do is um, thinking about how few of the things that we physically have in the world actually need to be physical. Um, you know, obviously things like chairs need to be physical, right? You're not gonna be sitting mm-hmm. on a hologram. Food needs to be physical. Um, But most entertainment type stuff, I mean, not just cards, but games, most media, TVs in the future probably won't need to actually be physical things. It'll just be like a, an app. Like we'll just have like some, you know, high school students or college students developing apps and it'll just be wild, like crazy stuff will will just kind of get created. And and, but so, yeah, so you'll eventually be able to kind of have that all come through, um, through these AR glasses. From a bird's eye view, like if you looked at where this is going, it's going to become more immersive, right? It's going yeah. to get better. It's going to be more convincing. And this is the real argument for simulation theory, right? The argument for stim- simulation theory is if there's so many civilizations out there in the universe and they're so advanced, ultimately one has to create a simulation. It seems like that's going to happen. If the if the human race could survive another 100,000 years, the odds that we wouldn't create a, a really realistic simulation it's probably pretty low yeah i think the question is just how how realistic and how good over the next few years it'll be working right so hopefully you'll just be able to teleport in and and basically just show up as a hologram and work remotely and live wherever you want be with your family um wherever they live um but just be able to show up in whatever place um i think that that's gonna that's gonna be pretty awesome and I think we'll be able to, to do that pretty well. It's so, going to be a real issue for commercial real estate. Um, <laughs> There's not going to be a lot of offices. If that actually becomes like as good as having a cell phone in your pocket and being able to make a phone call, yeah, you could just sort of teleport to work. Yeah. It's going to be a problem. No one's going to want to work. Well, that's a different question. I mean, whether I mean, or not I they're think... going to physically want to be there, rather. They'll, they'll, maybe they'll want to work, but they're <laughs> not going to want to go to the office. So neural interfaces. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Like where where is where is that going? And where are we at right now? There's feedback that you're giving to the computer, and then there's information that the computer gives to you. The the super hard part here is going to be having a computer give you information straight into your brain, and that's not a thing that we're working on. So, um, some people, I mean, like like Elon with Neuralink and those companies, I think it's. I mean, that's just taking this like 
super far off. I mean, maybe it'll be ready in like a couple decades. I mean, there will probably be interesting use cases in the near term for people who have injuries or something like that. But I think, um, you know, normal people, I think in the next 10 or 15 years are probably not going to want to get something just installed in their brain for fun is my, is my guess. I don't um, want to be an early adopter. Yeah. I, I think you, you want like the mature version of that. Not yeah. like the, not the one that where it's going to get a lot better next year and you need to like get your brain implant um, upgraded every year. Have oh you God. always been a very physical person? Because I follow you on Instagram. Yeah. You, I see wakeboarding and stuff. Yeah. You're, you're very active, like which I think is very, it's a great message too. It's very, it's great for you, but it's also a great message for other people that here's this guy who's incredibly busy he's, and his life is uh, overwhelmed with technology, yet he's constantly doing physical things and using his body and exercising and getting out in nature. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's something that my parents really stressed for me early on they're like my parents pushed me pretty hard they're like you're gonna do well in school and you're gonna be on three varsity sports teams and like and it's That's just it yeah well i mean and like and you know a lot of other stuff no but, but i mean like that you don't have any debate it's it this no, is, it's, this is yeah. the rule so it's like that's that's just what you're gonna do so um and i'm, I'm super grateful for it we have a team of hundreds of like counter-terrorism and counter-intelligence people who basically try to look for these different signals. It's more of an arms race and you just kind of are building up better technology for defense and you assume that they're going to keep on getting more sophisticated and you keep on needing to get better. But I mean, I mean at this point we have like, it's like tens of thousands of people working on this at the company. I think we spend like $5 billion a year was the last stat on, on sort of all this community integrity work. I mean, it's like, like our kind of defense budget, it's like, I mean, just to put the numbers in perspective, I, love I mean, that's, that you call it a defense budget. I mean, it's, it's basically it's like, I, I mean, it's it's um to, to defend the integrity of the of the community, but it's like it's I mean, it is I think yeah. bigger than 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 the defense budgets of probably most countries. The Hunter Biden laptop story, the New York yeah, we Post, have that too. yeah. So you guys censored that as well. So we took a different path than Twitter. Um, I mean, basically, the background here is the FBI. I think basically came to us. Some some folks on our team. I was like, hey, um, just so you know, like you should be on high alert. There was the, we we thought that there was a lot of Russian propaganda in the 2016 election. We have it on notice that basically there's about to be some kind of dump of of, um, uh, of that's similar to that. So just be vigilant. Flat Earth. Uh-huh. Like if someone has a flat Earth theory, God, I want to listen. I want to listen because it's so dumb. I want to know how does someone start to form these ideas? Because there's a thriving community. I don't know if you know, have you ever Google hashtag space is fake? I have not. You should. I'm there's a, not sure I'm gonna a, a for large that, group of humans out there that believe <laughs> that we live in some sort of a dome and that there's like essentially like light show. bulbs hung in the sky. It's so dumb. But I mean, like, what do you do about that? Like, if I was running Facebook, I would let that stay.